explosion with a yield of about 81 gigatons TNT equivalent. 81 gigatons. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Sabine Hossenfelder's videos. Specifically, a big nuclear bomb could fix climate change. Mm hmm For those of you that don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. Don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. I sometimes wonder if not there are some physics fix for climate change. Self-replicating uh -huh. nanobots that collect carbon dioxide, artificial super trees, or clean energy from the vacuum. <laughs> then I wake up. Kind of but today I have a paper from a physicist who knows how to make dreams reality. He's figured out how to slow climate change with nuclear bombs. A worldwide okay. nuclear war would, besides killing a lot of people, also blast huge amounts of ash into the atmosphere, which would cool the entire planet. Is his intent also to wipe out cities, population centers, to reduce emissions? Call the population. That's insane. This nuclear winter, as it's called, would result in crop failures and could kill billions of people within five to ten years. That's one way nuclear bombs could fix climate change. Wiping us out so we don't evolve to change the climate even more with super crazy advanced type one, type two civilization level technology. Ugh. Talk about the cure being worse than the illness. Not sure what he means by fix, because this is also going to cause some mass extinction events, depending on the level of nuclear war he's talking about. But it's not what the new paper is about. Instead, the new paper is a plan to save the world that, leaving aside the thing with a bomb, is actually quite modest. It's an idea for modest. carbon dioxide removal known as enhanced weather. Modest with a nuclear bomb, using it for geoengineering of some sort. I don't think there is. And does said paper detail every unintended consequence in it? Wait, wait why am I even taking this seriously? Weathering is the process by which some minerals naturally absorb carbon dioxide and bind it. The common way of doing this is to produce a lot of these minerals, grinding them and then distributing them over large areas of land. But it's expensive to produce that much stuff and cumbersome to distribute it. That's where the nuclear bombs come in. Yes. Nuclear bombs as your distribution system, because that's very, because that's a precise instrument there to <laughs> distribute everything effectively. Uh. The author suggests that we place a nuclear bomb underneath the sea at several kilometers depth in an area with a lot of basalt. The I hope that drawing was part of that report, because that is crazy. This is a type of rock that naturally absorbs carbon dioxide. All that water would absorb the shock of the explosion and ocean currents would then distribute the basalt. This would suddenly make a lot of water very good at absorbing carbon dioxide. So weathering was mentioned, a process that takes thousands of years and requires very specific water, current, pH, weather parameters in order to do effectively. I'm going to say again, a nuclear weapon is not a precise instrument. Also, we don't even have enough nuclear weapons to have a discernible impact on that scale because they are right that the water would absorb most of the energy and effectively the amount of radioactivity that makes it to the surface would be limited. So this would be less devastating. It just won't do a whole lot in general. Setting off nukes underwater, no. So at best, we have an inefficient geoengineering process. At worst, and I'm just talking in terms of climate change, nukes are going to vaporize organic material on the seabed, releasing more CO2. Not to mention contaminate the ocean with cesium-137, strontium-90. So I said the contamination won't hit the surface. A lot of it won't. But you're still going to contaminate a lot of the ocean for no good reason. Can't think of a real good reason to contaminate the ocean, but that's beside the point. And if we did mass production of enough nuclear weapons to do this sort of thing, it's going to have some really nasty seismic effects. Earthquakes and tsunamis. Right. And the oceans take up a lot of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. So the carbon dioxide goes into the water and then into the finely distributed rocks and stays there. The author estimates that an explosion with a yield of about 81 gigawatts 
gigatons TNT equivalent. 81 gigatons. So that's a lot. All the world's nu the world's nuclear arsenal is not that big. There's about 10, 12,000 nuclear weapons. Being generous, say they're a megaton each. They're not. Average is on the order of a few hundred kilotons, 300, maybe 400, if even that much. But let's say they're a megaton each. That's 12-ish. So nowhere near enough. So this person is not only saying we should use nukes, but we don't have enough nukes. Okay. That's a very different opinion. Could undo 30 years worth of carbon dioxide emissions. So that would result in a temperature decrease of roughly 1.5 degrees Celsius. It I'm also looking at this statement above. This is a radical idea and requires serious discussion around its deployment. It requires discussion. I don't know how many people are going to take this seriously. And I like this statement at the bottom mentioning safety. And then nuclear explosions are inherently unsafe. That is true. People have been wrong in calculating the yields of said nuclear explosions, such as the Castle Bravo device in the 50s. And the ocean is not a controlled environment. It's a lesser impact environment. I will say that. I'll give them that. But it is by no means a controlled environment. And ultimately, I can see this releasing more carbon dioxide, depending on where they set this off. And a ridiculous amount of radioactive material. It'd be substantial. He estimates the cost with $10 billion. That doesn't even buy you a Twitter on a rainy day. Is he? <laughs> $10 billion, the logistics of this. So let's just say we had the nukes already. A detonation sequence for all of them to be effective, and by effective I mean release the full amount of kilotons per device, is going to have to be carefully planned and sequenced. Because one nuke blowing up next to another one, contrary to what you see in movies and video games, is not going to cause the adjacent nuke to explode in a nuclear explosion. It's just going to destroy it. They can be sequenced such that they all go off like that. That's possible. It's challenging with the logistics of moving all the nukes there, getting everyone to cooperate and leaving them with none to defend themselves. I'm sure that's going to go over real well with uh, the nuclear powers. And yeah, it's uh, it would be a nightmare trying to coordinate such a thing. Even picked a location that's the Caraguelan Plateau, basically in the middle of the Indian Ocean, home of the Caraguelan Islands, also known as Desolation Islands, uninhabited except for some French soldiers who use it to try new baguettes on. Are these penguins supposed to be the French soldiers? I'd I don't know. Are these penguins supposed to be the French soldiers? Penguins. But you won't be surprised to hear that there are a few problems with this idea. <laughs> one is that 81 gigatons is about 1,000 times larger than the biggest nuclear bomb ever detonated. More than that even. That, the largest one detonated was 50 megatons, or 0 0.05 gigatons, if you want to put it in that context. Yes, a 100 megaton was designed, but it was never detonated. This was the Tsar bomb, a hydrogen bomb bomb that the Soviets blew up in 1961 just for show, basically. It had a yield of about... Basically, yeah, um, just for show. It, an impractical weapon to use in warfare because it would be very easy to intercept and not exactly the most efficient use of nuclear material to maximize your strategic objectives in a nuclear war. 50 megatons of TNT, about 3,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Mm -hmm. For this new proposal, we'd need a bomb that's another 1,000 times larger. So that's 3 million Hiroshima bombs. Or again, build a bunch of smaller ones and try to sequence them in some way. I'm actually not sure which would be harder. There are also some safety concerns, such as radioactive <laughs> contamination there? of the seafloor. <laughs> what say. happens if that explosion blasts a lot of water vapor, also a greenhouse gas, into the upper... <laughs> Uh, yes, the water vapor. That's the big concern I have about detonating nukes is the water vapor. I've, I've never heard anyone mention that. Yes, water vapor is indeed a greenhouse gas, but the water vapor, even from this ridiculous nuke, would be a drop in the bucket compared to uh, how much water vapor is already exists. The reason why we don't talk about water vapor as a greenhouse gas is there's so much of it, the human impact on water vapor is pretty minimal. ...atmosphere, or what all that basalt would do to the oceans. Though it's a naturally occurring <laughs> yeah, and rather inert like substance, it. but maybe we shouldn't trust physics. 
physicists on this. I think we might be running into the difference of physicists and engineers and about how well things would work in theory versus in practice. Nothing against physicists, by the way, but I'm also still not 100% sure that paper was a joke, because it sounds like it is. By the way, if you're curious what an 81 gigaton nuke would do if it was detonated on land, yeah, the fireball would be well over 100 kilometers wide, the blast wave would be about the size of Texas, and third degree burn radius would be probably on the order of a thousand kilometers. I say probably with all that is because most nuclear weapon modeling software simply doesn't go this high. <laughs> It's just crazy. And no one asked the fish. This isn't the only mm. world-saving tech Gotta idea that scientists fish. have come up with over the years. One impressive idea is to build big chimneys that would be some kilometers high and basically give the heat on the ground a better escape route to space. I <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Forget using your space elevator to bring people up into space. Um, yeah, we're just going to take all the greenhouse gases out. As far as nuclear winter would concern, so there's one misconception out there that it's this big on-off switch as in it would destroy everything or not do that much, simply not happen at all once you once enough stuff is in the atmosphere, for lack of a better word. This is a bit beyond the topic of this video, but depending on where they set this off, this could definitely cause some concentrated debris into the upper atmosphere, even if it is detonated underwater. Though, that really depends a lot on the location, more so than anything else. As far as the other direction, it's not going to crack the Earth's crust at all. It could cause some localized seismic effects, especially if it's near a fault line, but not as catastrophic as some might think. That stuff's more of the topic for another video, though. I like this idea because such a chimney wouldn't only cool the planet, it'd also produce energy because the warm air oh, there wants to rise. The inventor of the idea has a prototype that's about four meters high, <laughs> so now we just need to make this a thousand times larger. There you go problem solved. A similar proposal is to let warm air rise up in balloons and then release the air at high altitude. That'll take uh -huh. a lot of balloons though. Another world-saving idea is to put giant mirrors into space mm. between us and the sun to reduce the energy that our planet absorbs. Wow. It has a similar effect as putting tiny particles into the stratosphere, but has the advantage that by moving the mirrors, the effect can be adjusted. The yeah, forget solar power and just say right back at you to the sun. Send it all the way back and cause solar overheating. These ideas all have a similar problem, and that isn't the cost or even the enormous scale and necessary material. No uh, I was going to say that's a pretty big one, but go on. No, the major problem is that they'd all require cooperation among many people. <laughs> and lack of cooperation is exactly the reason why we don't manage to phase out fossil fuels in the first place. That's a fair bit more complicated, but yeah, there is definitely something behind that. Though I doubt it's going to happen, I personally very much like the nuclear bomb idea, and I'd say go for really? it. What's ten? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> what do you like about it? billion dollars among friends. At the very least, we'd get an amazing bang for the buck. Your friends. At the very least, we'd get an amazing bang for the buck. Ah, to make a pun. That's why. Okay. Best way to fight climate change is just to make more nuclear power plants, as they don't produce any carbon dioxide when they're operating. This was quite silly. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.